Coming up on Ag Week TV, a dairy cattle research and training facility is set to shut down, ending an era for South Dakota State University, but students are fighting to save it. Our livestock tour continues this week as we visit a North Dakota cattle operation known for raising gentle stock. We'll learn about the latest in sustainability efforts for dry edible bean growers. And cattle producers learn about beefing up their shrinking herds. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Emily Beal. Since 1896, there have been dairy cows on the South Dakota State University campus, but that will come to an end in June as the university is closing the dairy research and training facility, but it's causing some controversy among students and they plan to fight to keep it open. We take a look in this week's Ag Week cover story. Students in the Dairy Science Department at SDSU were shocked when a college-wide email was sent announcing the campus dairy farm is closing. I was extremely surprised. I mean, I don't think any of us really knew it was coming. Students had been told that soon a newer, more updated dairy farm would be built on campus. But now, they're planning to close down the operation instead. At first, I was like, I was kind of shocked. I was like, what? Because like last year and even this fall, they were like planning on putting in a robot and like plans, plans I know change, but to initially come out and say like, hey, we're gonna put in these robots, like yeah, let's go. I was so excited for that, but then when they came out and said, oh, hey, we're gonna, we're just gonna shut this down. I'm like, what? The current dairy farm is outdated and due to lack of funding, the university was unable to reach their goals of over $28 million to update the farm, or over $50 million needed to build a new farm, even with $7.5 million being allocated by the state for this project. Unfortunately, we find ourselves where we do not have a viable path forward for a new farm, and it's not viable to continue the operations of the present farm. So that is very regrettable. It's a situation that's developed over a number of years. Um, I realize the announcement um, may be found to be sudden by some, but in fact, this has been developing over an extended period of time. Some alumni and students feel that they don't need the most updated facilities to still benefit from keeping the dairy open. But um, SDSU utilizes and some of the programs that they do out on the farm are very similar to real life applications. We don't necessarily need a several million dollar brand new dairy in order to operate because a lot of the students that come through the dairy program and plan to go back to the dairy farm are students that come from, um, I guess, real life modern dairies. So it doesn't necessarily need to be um, a thousand cows with a bunch of robots because that's not what a lot of students are going back home to. SDSU is working with local dairies to be able to still offer hands-on dairy experiences to the students. However, the on-campus dairy is a vital part of extracurricular activities, including Dairy Club, Dairy Judging Team, Little International, and Dairy Camp. We bring in youth from the states of South Dakota, Minnesota. We even had some from Wisconsin last year, and they get to come. They get a dairy heifer for three days. They get to walk them around, wash them, take care of their heifer. It's just a, such a fun experience for them. So now, without the dairy there, we can't really have our dairy camp anymore. But students are determined to have a voice in this decision. Senior dairy production student Jacob Schaefer has been collecting testimonies to send to members of the state legislature. I have talked to a lot of different people um, from alumni to current students to farm employees um, that just just truly don't understand how this is happening or how this got out of hand. Their goal is to bring this situation to the spotlight and hopefully save the dairy. Obviously, there's been a lot of buzz on social media, but we want our voices to be heard. You could read more in the next Ag Week magazine or at agweek.com. Water contamination was a hot topic at the Minnesota Ag Expo in Mankato. Corn and soybean growers from southeast Minnesota with leaders from the state ag department and the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, MPCA Assistant Commissioner Dana, Dana Vanderbosch and State Ag Commissioner Tom Peterson reiterated how the state is very active in preventing nitrate contamination in ground and surface waters. The president of the Minnesota Corn Growers Association, Dana Allentulli, says pressures from the EPA has renewed interest in nitrates in groundwater, something her farm has worked on for years. We just really think that um, farmers are doing a great job of taking care of the land, um, but there's a heightened interest in water quality. 
around nitrogen. Other topics at the Expo included E15 waivers and the 2024 Farm Bill. The event was hosted jointly by the Minnesota Soybean Growers Association and Minnesota Corn Growers Association. As the National Corn Growers Association looks towards the 2024 season, one of the main issues they are focusing on is the upcoming Farm Bill. Crop insurance is a key component that that group wants to see continued. They would also like to see programs like the agricultural risk coverage and price loss coverage improved. For Farm Bill, crop insurance is, is the number one issue always. We've got a good crop insurance program. We need to keep this good crop insurance program that we have. Uh, and then there's the safety net programs. ARC and PLC both can be strengthened with some uh, minor modifications that, that won't be extremely costly, so uh, we are working on that. National Corn Growers Association is also looking to find ways to increase the demand for corn through three avenues, ethanol, livestock, and exports. This includes being able to market E15 year-round and seeing the Next Generation Fuels Act passed that would allow higher blends of ethanol to be sold. Up next on Ag Week TV, our livestock tour continues with a visit to a cattle breeder developing gentle cows. Powerful genetics at an incredible value. Join us for Olson's Red Power Bull Sale Thursday, February 15th at the ranch west of Argusville, North Dakota. We'll be selling about 70 head of high quality Red Angus and Pold Hereford bulls, heifers, and select bred females. We're celebrating 88 years in the registered cattle business in our heated sale facility. Join us at noon for a great meal before our 1 p.m. sale on Thursday, February 15th, west of Argusville, North Dakota. A farmer's work is never done. You're not just planting a seed or harvesting a crop. You're growing a legacy. When you're up before dawn and out long past dusk, you need a banker who will work with your schedule, not the other way around. At Choice, we do banking differently, giving farmers like you time back to focus on what really matters. Choice Bank, top North Dakota Ag Bank for 10 years running and always people first. Attention farmers, increase your revenue and prevent compaction from squeezing your profits with PTG's Central Tire Inflation System, now offered at OK Tire and Service. All controlled from the tips of your fingers, ensuring increased yield and improved fuel economy by adjusting your tire pressure within minutes. You are ensuring the best performance from your tractor on the field and off the field, compatible with any radial tire. Call the OK Tire team today or visit OKTireInc.com to learn more. North Dakota's conservation agencies have joined forces to better serve producers and landowners. The Dakota Legacy Initiative brings conservation resources together in one easy to navigate website. Easily find programs, events, technical assistance, and educational materials most relevant to you. Come see where collaborative conservation begins. Learn more at dakotalegacyinitiative.com. When it comes to grain storage and handling solutions, one call does it all. Gateway Building Systems is one of the largest Brock bin dealers in the U.S. Our expert team is dedicated to creating a customized plan for your future success. Expanding your operation has never been easier with our range of Brock solid bins, grain dryers, conveyors, and more. As your trusted partner, we are committed to serving the needs of farmers. Take the first step toward success and call Gateway Building Systems today. The Egg Week Livestock Tour is brought to you by Linskov Ranch and Stockman's Livestock Exchange. Our Ag Week Livestock Tour continues this week. We travel to far northeast North Dakota, just 30 miles from the Canadian border. That's where Vaughn Farms produces registered seed stock cattle known for their gentle demeanor. Well, I showed my first calf when I was three, and I think I started right then. David Vaughn says it all started when his dad bought a bull 40 years ago. And he says he's never thought about doing anything else. David, his brother Craig, and their families farm and breed limousine cattle near Cavalier, North Dakota. He says he loves improving his cattle every year. You know, you always hear people say this is the best set we've ever had every year. But honestly, they have to be the best set every year. Because if you're not having better ones every year, then you're falling behind. The Vons calve about 100 cows each spring, then sell about 45 bulls and 20 heifers in February. 
They also grow row crops, including their own feed. So Vaughn says it's essential that the cattle have temperaments that allow for the brothers to work with them single-handedly. Part of that efficiency means they synchronize the AI for two weeks each spring. It makes it easier synchronizing them because then one guy can AI cows and one guy can out, be out in the field. And over the last 25 years, we've called hard for disposition, so one guy can work the cows by himself. In addition to a gentle demeanor, they also breed for muscle structure and longevity. Good mothers, quiet, longevity. A lot of them will last 10 to 12 years. And then when you go to get rid of them when they're 12 years old, they'll top the market because they're just big, loaded with muscle cows. Vaughn says most of their customers are commercial breeders and most are repeat customers. He says it's a long process from breeding to calving to selling, but he's proud of the cattle they produce. That's my passion. You know, I like to think I'm good at it. Vaughn Farms is holding its annual production sale on February 21st at Napoleon Livestock. Technical help is now available for those who want to develop or expand meat and poultry processing plants. The USDA is partnering with the Flower Hill Institute to offer this first-of-its-kind program. The Meat and Poultry Processing Assistance Program will help people navigate federal funding, designing their facility, and much more. So our job now is to reach out, make sure that people are, are signing up to get this no-cost technical assistance, and that we're working with them to, to help connect them with the right resources. You can find more information on the program at the flowerhillinstitute.org or usda.gov. Farm succession planning is an important but very complicated process. It can take years to make a plan, so estate attorneys advise farm families to get started if they don't have a plan in place. A succession planning event in southeast Minnesota this week drew a big crowd. Two estate attorneys answered farmers' questions. Cole Tucson is also a farmer, so he understands how complicated it can be, but says events like this help families start talking about tough topics. We're constantly balancing, you know, the, the landholder and the generation that's running it right now. And how can we maintain their income and maintain their lifestyle, you know, and slowly giving up control and then working the next generation is. So that's why, you know, working with both sides and getting the happy medium and getting that pace that they're both comfortable with. The event was put on by the Houston County Farm Bureau. President Rebecca Marshall says her family is starting to work on their plan. So she knows this is important information for farmers. It is definitely an overwhelming experience just because there's so many moving parts, especially with like machinery, livestock and equipment. Um, so it's very um, important to have somebody that really understands and knows like the behind the scenes because we could not do this by ourselves. Assistant Minnesota Ag Commissioner Patrice Bailey also spoke at the event. Marshall says it was so popular they would likely hold more seminars on succession planning. At North Texas Bean Growers Association's annual Bean Day, we'll check in on sustainability efforts made by dry edible bean farmers. Improve the profitability of your ranch by partnering with Top Herefords. Attend the bull sale February 9th at the ranch in Grace City, North Dakota. When you buy a Top Herefords bull, you're getting top of the line genetics and benefits of marketing your feeder cattle and replacement quality heifers direct. It's a common sense approach to greater profits on your ranch. View the 2024 catalog at topherfords.com and join us at the bull sale February 9th at 1 p.m. Built in North Dakota and delivered across the Midwest, every Pinky home is a custom home, designed for your family, built by ours. And with our on-site lumber yard and generations of experience, we can help build the home of your dreams without breaking your budget. Build something that lasts. Build with Pinky Homes. Get to know us and see all of your customization options at pinkyhomes.com. Attention growers, agribusinesses, and ice fishermen. Agronomy on Ice, the ag event with the tailgating feel, is back. Put on your cold weather gear and join us on Wednesday, February 7th at Woodland Resort in Devils Lake, North Dakota for this unique networking event. See your friends, wet a line, and try some Scandinavian delicacies. Don't miss the Agronomy on Ice Fishing Derby Tuesday, February 6th. Visit agronomyonice.com for more information. We'll see you Wednesday, February 7th on Devils Lake. The simplicity, I mean, it's a complicated planner, but it's also simple. 
that roll meter is just very simple and it just seems to work. I liked it just having that tube delivering the seed with an airstream and not having to have extra belts on it or extra electric motors and stuff. A lot of this machinery seems like it's almost getting overly complicated. The simpler that it can work, but do what it's supposed to do, I think this machine can definitely do that. There's no easy button, no guarantees, or promises of a good year. This is farming. It's unpredictable and demanding with long days and sometimes stressful nights. It's weathering the storms and coming out successful. Farming isn't for everyone. We thank those who make it their life because it is for everyone. Ag Week Weather is sponsored by Bremer Bank. Connect with a banker today at bremer.com. Is this mild winter weather here to stay? Here's John with our AgriWeather Outlook. Looking over the end of uh, January and the start of the month of February, the Arctic air is safe and secure up in the Arctic. It's not going to drop down. At least it doesn't look like it's going to drop down into the United States at all. In fact, it's staying up pretty far north for the time being. So what we have left is a lot of sort of cool air, and it's fairly widespread cool air. Fairly common in this type of weather pattern, where further south it's a little cooler than average, and in the north it tends to be quite a bit warmer than than average to the Great Plains. The South also, in addition to being a little bit cooler than average, a lot of rainy weather down there, and that will lead to some areas of significant snow in the Northeast over the next uh, couple of weeks. I'll show you where and when, and also out West in the mountains. But the Northern Plains, not going to see very likely much precipitation over the next couple of weeks. So we got kind of a mismatch of jet streams. I've really highlighted three areas of primary concern. The primary jet streams are this one and this one, the southern subtropical jet stream, which is going to keep uh, mostly pretty far south as it does. There is also kind of a, a bit of a strengthening around the Arctic region, but it's staying pretty far north and not crashing. That's going to keep Keep the frigid air up in pretty high latitudes and allow a lot of very mild air. Some of this, when I call it cool, that's mostly where days are above freezing. And some of this that's not marked is where you may get weather even into the 50s and, and 60s. So this is going to be some pretty warm air. Generally speaking, the Middle West will be a little too warm for snow for part of this week, but then we will see some cooler weather dropping down. And there may be with this active jet stream pattern, a few visitations a couple, one each week, probably, of a chance of freezing rain with snow on the northern side and rain down in the south. Out west, looks like the snows will be piling up in the Rocky Mountains with this particular weather pattern, and eventually there'll be a chance to get some of that precipitation to work into the Pacific Northwest. But we will continue to keep the cold weather up north, the south generally kind of cooler than average, and the north being cool, actually that translates to warmer than average. Now, as I mentioned precipitation, I expect the eastern seaboard to get at least one, it looks like early in this first week, here toward the end of January. Snows will continue to build up in the inner mountain region. Rains not really getting down into Southern California, but likely in British Columbia and perhaps down into the Seattle area. If it rains or snows in the Great Plains, it's going to be drizzle. It's just not going to be much of anything. As we look at the second week, now the first full week of February, there may be some stormier weather in the southern plains, some of that mixed precipitation, but I think we'll keep the northern plains fairly dry while the eastern Midwest does look wet. It was October 1st, 2009. We needed some machinery for the farm. We decided to see if we could become a dealer, and that's kind of grown into what it's been today. We offer basically anything short line. Seed tenders, fertilizer spreaders, sprayers. We can really set ourselves apart by the knowledge we have in those things, by the amount of units we have on hand at all times. I just have a passion for helping people, um, getting to know people. It just becomes a lot of fun. 
Improve the profitability of your ranch by partnering with Top Herefords. Attend the bull sale February 9th at the ranch in Grace City, North Dakota. When you buy a Top Herefords bull, you're getting top of the line genetics and benefits of marketing your feeder cattle and replacement quality heifers direct. It's a common sense approach to greater profits on your ranch. View the 2024 catalog at topherfords.com and join us at the bull sale February 9th at 1 p.m. Looking to add non-GMO conventional and organic soybeans to your rotation this year? Soyco International out of Gary, Minnesota is looking for new farmer contracts for the 2023 season. They have proven marketing strategies, partnered with local agronomy expertise to work alongside and provide the certified seeds needed for their contract growers. Soyco International is offering premium prices to boost your operation's bottom line. Reach out to Sean Young today at 218-350-3863 to answer any questions. Attention growers, agribusinesses, and ice fishermen. Agronomy on Ice, the ag event with the tailgating feel, is back. Put on your cold weather gear and join us on Wednesday, February 7th at Woodland Resort in Devils Lake, North Dakota for this unique networking event. See your friends, wet a line, and try some Scandinavian delicacies. Don't miss the Agronomy on Ice Fishing Derby Tuesday, February 6th. Visit agronomyonice.com for more information. We'll see you Wednesday, February 7th on Devils Lake. Powerful genetics at an incredible value. Join us for Olson's Red Power Bull Sale Thursday, February 15th at the ranch west of Argusville, North Dakota. We'll be selling about 70 head of high quality Red Angus and Pulled Hereford Bulls, Heifers and Select Bred Females. We're celebrating 88 years in the registered cattle business in our heated sale facility. Join us at noon for a great meal before our 1 p.m. sale on Thursday, February 15th west of Argusville, North Dakota. Like many sectors of agriculture, the dry edible bean industry is working on sustainability and greater production with fewer inputs. The North Harvest Bean Growers Association annual bean day featured a series of speakers on sustainability issues. Jenny Schlecht was there and has more. Sustainability is a big deal in agriculture, and that includes for dry edible bean growers. Farmers are evaluating their land every single day, and they're making investments in their land. They want to protect that land every single day. Paul Sheets is the director of Climate Smart Ag Origination at ag giant Archer Daniels Midland. The multinational food processing and commodity trading corporation is working on a program to incentivize farmers to use climate smart practices. As long as we see that the consumer is asking for a little bit more transparency and a little bit more positive environmental impact and it creates a business uh, business opportunity to the farmer. Uh, so ultimately there has to be uh, financial incentives um, when it comes to executing programs to farmers. Their time is worth as much as anybody else's time. Efforts to reduce carbon footprints are going on throughout the supply chain. It's easier to take small steps when you want to take them than to be dragged forward when you don't when you're not ready for it. Charles Walksmith is vice president of Chippewa Valley Bean Company of Wisconsin. He says the company has been working on increasing sustainability for about seven years. He says not only is it good for the earth, their customers want it, especially in Europe. When I think of our growers, I think of everybody being a good steward, and that's a word that's bandied about quite a bit, but we are. We're multi-generational businesses that are involved with keeping the soil and the environment healthy. This is what we do. Let's find ways to tell this story in a measurable way, and we'll have a really good story to tell. In Fargo, this is Jenny Schlecht for Ag Week. Bean Day also featured conversations about research and markets about dry edible beans. Still ahead on Ag Week TV, efforts to reverse the trend of shrieking cow-calf herds. There's no easy button, no guarantees, or promises of a good year. This is farming. It's unpredictable and demanding with long days and sometimes stressful nights. It's weathering the storms and coming out successful. Farming isn't for everyone. We thank those who make it their life because it is for everyone. Built in North Dakota and delivered across the Midwest, every pinky home is a custom home. Designed for your family, built by ours. 
And with our on-site lumberyard and generations of experience, we can help build the home of your dreams without breaking your budget. Build something that lasts. Build with Pinky Homes. Get to know us and see all of your customization options at pinkyhomes.com. A farmer's work is never done. You're not just planting a seed or harvesting a crop. You're growing a legacy. When you're up before dawn and out long past dusk, you need a banker who will work with your schedule, not the other way around. At Choice, we do banking differently, giving farmers like you time back to focus on what really matters. Choice Bank, top North Dakota Ag Bank for 10 years running and always people first. Attention farmers, increase your revenue and prevent compaction from squeezing your profits with PTG's Central Tire Inflation System, now offered at OK Tire and Service. All controlled from the tips of your fingers, ensuring increased yield and improved fuel economy by adjusting your tire pressure within minutes. You are ensuring the best performance from your tractor on the field and off the field, compatible with any radial tire. Call the OK Tire team today or visit OKTireInc.com to learn more. When it comes to grain storage and handling solutions, one call does it all. Gateway Building Systems is one of the largest Brock bin dealers in the U.S. Our expert team is dedicated to creating a customized plan for your future success. Expanding your operation has never been easier with our range of Brock solid bins, grain dryers, conveyors, and more. As your trusted partner, we are committed to serving the needs of farmers. Take the first step toward success and call Gateway Building Systems today. Minnesota's cow-calf herd continues to face challenges in growth. Managing herds was the topic of the first of nine cow-calf days put on by the University of Minnesota. Experts they, there say even well-managed herds saw as much as a 25 to 40 percent open cows across the country in 2023. Slipping cow pregnancy rates are not helping with rebuilding herds. Eric Musel, an assistant professor for beef systems at the U of M, says continuing drought is a big factor. They just haven't seen, even with good calf prices, haven't seen a lot of rebuilding of the herd yet. I think a lot of that's just because it's been dry. You know, guys are just kind of wait to see what happens. And so we just haven't seen much movement in the price of bread stock, which would suggest that, you know, we're not really back to rebuilding the herd yet. Although much of cattle country has been throughout drought the last few years, 2023 started wetter than normal. Then it got very hot, and that takes a toll on the herds. A much wetter June, and so the grass was higher water content, probably less mineral content. As a consequence, those cows uh, lacked nutrients to a certain extent. And then the guys that bred in June and July, it was extremely hot, um, and the fly pressure was horrendous this year. Larson suggests adding supplemental feeds, improving pasture forage, and controlling flies. Stories you'll only see on agweek.com and in Agweek magazine this week. Experts in the region explain what you should be doing to get your equipment ready for planting season. And a veteran in Minnesota looks to increase the production of his urban farming operation with the help of his service dog. We appreciate you watching Ag Week TV. Remember to check us out daily on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok to keep up on all your ag news. Have a wonderful week, everyone.